I can get started with kind of introducing who I am. I'm Kara Boli. I do the makerspace here at the library. So the makerspace has all kinds of exciting things like a 3D printer. We've got a sewing machine. We've got a silhouette cameo. We've got a laser etcher and then just some other general tools. Uh, right now it is not open just for any general use uh, with COVID, but we are working things out. If someone wants to have something 3D printed, we can kind of have it done for them and they can pick it up. Uh, we're also doing vinyl cuts, paper cuts on the silhouette. And basically, if you have a project, we can help you work it out with the supplies we have. We also have the Ellison machine up here, and that is available to use by appointment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you haven't been in the library, um, you might not know we've got craft kits that we've been working on. Uh, let me pick up one here. This is one I'm working on getting ready. It still needs a couple things, but these are going to be T-shirts that have lace that go around the neck and then comes down to a spider. Oh. For our Halloween themed crafts. And those are free for people to pick up. We've got them down by the elevator when you come up to the main floor. And then what else? Well, also helping host this is Pam, our Hello. team librarian. You can probably hear me too here. Yeah, here. You, you can talk. Um, so yeah, I'm the team librarian and I'm also partially adult librarian now then, I guess. So yeah, it's a new one that just started. Let's see, anyone else? I don't see anyone else in the waiting room. So if anyone does show up, we can just add them and I can kind of catch them up. In your kits, you should have, this is called roving. It's wool that hasn't been made into anything besides dyed and rolled into like a ball. So what we'll be doing with this is you'll want to roll it up to kind of make your initial shape. You'll probably want to save some of it for ears or a tail. So you'll want to make sure you have enough to make your cat, but you'll also want to take some off. And to remove it, you can't just kind of pull here because it's actually pretty strong. You'll want to kind of spread it out and then pull little bits of it off at a time. And you can kind of just shape it into that round shape. And we're going to go with a simpler shape. If you look at our example cat we have here, which Pam made, it's actually we made it using this tube and then we shaped it to have this head shape and then to have this body shape. And then she actually added a little bit here for the ears and added some on for the ears. We also use the eyes that are also provided in the kits for this one, but you can also needle felt the eyes. Um, if you're going to give this to a kid, I would definitely suggest needle felting the eyes because these are not so safe. Um, they might try to chew on it or, yeah, and it'd be a choking hazard. And then I also provided noses in the kits too, and you can just glue that on if you want one of those. But you can also needle felt it like we did here. You'll also have in your kit your needles. You've got three different sizes on your needles that you have, but you can just get away with using one needle, really. Um, and I'm going to do that. I, I've got just the middle size that you guys have, and I'll be using the same needle. Uh, needles can break, and they do wear out over time. And you probably can't see it too well on my screen, but if you look at the end of it, it's got little barbs on it. And those little barbs are going to catch the hairs of the wool and tangle it together. So that's what the felting is doing. It tangles these hairs of wool together. Um, just like when yarn is made, it gets spun and that spinning actually kind of tangles it and holds it in place. 
so it just makes it stronger. So the neat thing about needle felting is your project you can continue working on forever. Like it, it can be taken apart. Like I could rip this cat's head off and put it back together. Go ahead and do it. I could. Oh, how about I just rip off a piece? Cause that's actually gonna be hard to do just the head. So like I can just rip off this chunk right here, and then if I take a needle to it, I can reshape it back, add anything new that I may want, or I can make it exactly the way it was before. And actually, I'm gonna put that chunk back on so that it has like a hip shape. So there, it's got its hip right back on there. That'll probably need better shaping. Your cat has an injury. Okay, so if we want to get started, you'll want to take the portion of the black robing that you want to use for your cat. You might even have enough in your kit to make two just smaller cats. So you could split it in half and do that. Um, and then from there, we're just going to start stabbing it. And you'll want to actually kind of roll it pretty tightly. You don't want to do it super loose because then you have less work to do. So see how I'm doing it like that. And actually, I can also kind of wrap more towards the top so that the head can be a little bigger. And I'll just stab. Or could you um, do a body and then attach a head on? Yes, you could do a body and attach a head on too. And you can also attach more on once you've started felting it, if you think, oh, the head's not big enough. Now, with the stabbing, you'll always want to have it down on this padding. Um, that way you're not stabbing yourself. And you will still stab yourself. I've already actually stabbed myself today. <laughs> It was when I looked up at you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And um, so like you don't want to hold it in your hand and like go at it because you're going to stab through and get yourself. That's why I included band-aids because you may, may bleed a little. And in the sets that you have, the bigger needle might be better for this part because it, it can tangle more stuff together. And I'm just going to keep working all the way around it till it starts kind of making a shape. And from there, I'll sculpt it. Oh, you're doing it that way. I'm going to try it this way. Yeah, so that works. And this is actually probably going to be the thing that takes the longest time. It's just doing all this stabbing. It can also be relaxing. Especially if you're mad at someone. Yeah. So you can kind of see it's starting to take shape. Um, on this one, it's got about the same squishiness. When you want to add a face to it, you kind of want to make it harder so that you can have something to attach those pieces to. Um, but you don't want to make it like super hard that you just break your needle off in it. And needles can break sometimes. Um, and also, if you're going to go with using these eyes, you'll want to leave it softer so that you can just kind of put it in like that.
So you can kind of see it's starting to take shape here. And from this point, I'll probably start sculpting it a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to look at it a little and think about the shape that it is now and how that kind of translates into a cat. So it kind of looks to me like this is a smaller end here. So I think that would be better for the head. And this would be more like the bottom and it's back here because it's a little rounder here. So I'm going to start sculpting a little in here. And I'll just do that by stabbing in those areas more often than the other parts. It is kind of fun just to watch you do this. I'm just going to define that line around the head and the body. So you can kind of see it's starting to shape around here. This is going to be the head and this is going to be the body. Okay, if you have suggestions. Yeah, if you have a line that you're trying to get rid of. Okay. Um, if you have a line that you're trying to get rid of, you can kind of push it back by going across, but you'll want to be careful when you're doing that because you can break your needle doing that, but you can kind of fluff it back out. Okay. So let's see what I'm doing here that I'm going across. Say I didn't like how I defined it there and wanted to pull it back out. Yeah. Like if you do it like too much against the wool, oh, you can break it. Okay, let's see. I'm still defining that body to head space here. And if you kind of decide that maybe you want the head to be a little bigger, you can add a little more of the stuff that you took off. Um, or you can kind of distribute it down if you think it's too big into the body. Wherever you poke is where it's going to get smaller. And if you push in more, it goes in farther. If you push in lighter, it does a little less. So if you're getting really like dimpled looking areas where it's in really far, kind of like I just, well, you can't really see with it being a black uh, wool, um, you can do that pushing back out on those areas and kind of push it across to smooth it. And if you're getting a lot of that, you'll probably want to do a little lighter pokes. But where you really want it to indent, you can push in a lot harder. Now for the bottom of my cat, since I'll probably want to make it stand up, I'll want to felt this pretty uh, stiff so, so that it has something to sit on and stay up. Make it flat. And I'll just do that once again by stabbing a lot into that area.
Oh, and what I was going to mention before is now that you're kind of starting to get a body shape and my focus is left. There we go. Um, you can search online for different shapes that you really want to go for. Uh, you can kind of go for big head, little body, or more of a longer body with a he head that's tiny, or you might just go for a simple round shape. And kind of use some of that for inspiration, or you can just completely freehand it. Uh, the one that was in our picture promoting this event, that was just freehanded, and so was this one that Pam did. Just remembering what a cat looks like. Yeah. And sometimes the roving kind of decides for you what way it wants to be. Like you can keep working with it and working with it and it's it just doesn't want to shape the way you want. And it's like, I'm going to be the shape instead. <laughs> oh, it's kind of like when you're working with sculpture and stone, like it also kind of decides how it's going to be shaped. So you can put a lot of effort into it, but it can also, the material itself can also have a part in deciding how it's going to turn out. But that's kind of part of the wonderful thing about needle felt is that it, it's this really neat organic looking form of art. got my cat shape here and this is going to be my front if you're going with these eyes like I said you just kind of push them in you can make a hole for them by just stabbing in here a little bit and then work it in and if you want to secure them a little more you can glue them in if you want to do that version but I'm going to needle felt these ones and then like the nose you just glue on. So you've got some colors in your kits that you can choose from. You can go with like a gold or a green. And so whatever color you're choosing, you'll just pull off a little bit of it. And you're probably going to pull off more than you actually need. Uh, and then we'll just stab some of it here off to the side to kind of start shaping that. And yeah, I definitely have way too much here. Take about half of what I had so that I have, I'm going to roll them up so I don't have to stab as much. So about two eyes there. I'm just going to carefully stab this because this is kind of one of the areas where you might end up accidentally stabbing yourself. Your fingernails can be a nice uh, tool for this to hold it down because your fingernails are going to protect you. They're a little harder to stab through. And then now that I've got somewhat of a disc here, I'm going to put it on the cat and check and see if that's the right size. And that is still definitely way too big for my cat. It really doesn't take much to make the details. Yeah, that's gonna be much better. I'm just gonna stab this a little bit 
make sure it's all tangled together. Enough to hold. And then I'll decide on where I want to put it. Let's say I want to put it here. I'm just going to stab it into the cat's face, basically. <laughs> Sounds a little aggressive, but that's how you do it. And actually, I haven't felted this face enough. It's still really soft, so it's not going to hold too well. So I'm going to actually make that a little stiffer. So it has something to stick to. And one of the things you can do to kind of help this go a little easier, it's really hard to see this color against it, maybe I should have done the yellow, uh, is to kind of do that across st stitches where you go horizontal and you're just kind of tangling those topmost pieces together. And you may have noticed, like, I've gotten some extra strands here from the green, and I can either just pull those off so that it's not everywhere. And then if you got just straggly pieces, the camera might not really pick that up, but on your pieces, you might notice you've got some straggly pieces. You can kind of just push it with the needle and then pull it and push it in. So you like grab it with the needle and push it down in. So then you'll just go and do the second eye when you're done with that one. And you can continue to work it after you put that second eye on so that they kind of are even. a couple of the horizontal stabs. Now say you don't like where you put the eyes, you can take and just kind of keep moving them by pushing it horizontally and you could move it all the way down here if you wanted to. Uh, nothing is really completely fixed in place with needle felting. You can keep changing it forever. So like if you take this cat out next year and you're like, mm, I don't like the way that looks, you can just get your needle back out and start working on it again. And if you've got really fine work on your cat, you can use that smaller needle on them. That's what those smaller needles are actually for. But you can just use one size, really. That's what I'm doing. So I'm still shaping those eyes. Even them, them out. And here you might, if you're up for the challenge, you might want to add little details to them. 
either like shines of a little bit of white. I've included some white in your kits. Or you can add like how cats have that uh, iris or yeah, that's the iris. Mm -hmm. That is kind of a slit. You can add that. And the way I did that on my sample one was I just took a small line of that black. Yeah, it's not showing up too well on the camera. Maybe I can show on the gold. So like I took a line like this, you can see it better on the gold here. And then I just felted it on the top and bottom of the eye to hold it in place to get that shape into my design. And all the extra part of it, I can just needle felt in. And my cat's kind of looking creepy right now without ears and just eyes. How's everyone doing with the eyes? So I'm doing my second strip over the eyes. You could also decide if you want to on your cat, you can add little details like, I almost knocked over the stool. Um, you could add little details of white. So I've included the white or other colors in there. Like you could put a patch on its neck or you can even add a patch on the ears a patch on a paw. You can be creative with this. You don't have to stick to the whole tutorial. So after that, I'm going to work on some ears. And it's going to be the same kind of process as the eyes. You'll just take a portion of the black or if you want to use the white or any other color for ears. Kind of twist and wind into an initial shape and then stab it to start shaping it. Lots of stabbing. Good Halloween craft. And I'm actually going to add into the ear the middle portion of a pink. So you, you can decide out of the colors that you've got in your kit what you want to add. And I'm going to just roll up a little piece of that and stick it in the middle and stab that into place on the ear. So I've got an ear here and 
then to attach it, all I have to do is stab it into place once again. Just like with the eyes. And you'll want to do that all the way around, tangling the wool together. And if you decide you don't like it, you can tear it off and try again. Or continue to shape it while it's on the head. Press that face in. Pink's not staying on too good on this one. So I'm just going to try that again later once I get the ear actually attached. My cat actually looks more like a bat at this point. <laughs> but I think I'm going to just tuck the ear in a little bit. And that should make it look a little bat, less bat-like. And now I'm going to add the pink back in. So we got one ear down. One more to go. And add my second ear. Oh, I was being bad. I was holding it. <laughs> Don't do what I was doing. I have noticed this wool from like the kit that we bought online doesn't felt as nicely as the stuff from the store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the wool that's in your kit came from a store over in Grand Rapids called Natural Fiber and Yarn. And they have pretty much every color you can think of available and you can buy it by the ounce. Do they actually have kits? They do have some kits that are pre-made too. And then you can also buy it pretty much, let's see, Walmart doesn't have it, but probably online for Walmart. Amazon has it, Hobby Lobby, and Joann's, but Hobby Lobby and Joann's have very small um, portions that you get. So like you'd have to buy a bunch of them to <laughs> actually make a project. It's more like your colors to use for details. Or they're just small projects.
Oh yeah, and Etsy, you can also find it on Etsy. Mm -hmm. I've also seen um, JBO had some kits too here in town. They had some penguin ones. Oh, I just pulled my <laughs> pink of my ear off. I guess I didn't have it actually attached in there. And actually with roving, if it's rough, like the stuff that you guys have, it actually felt better. So like what I've been having problems with is with the ears is this is like a softer roving mm -hmm. and it's not felting as nicely. And that was actually bought online on Amazon. It's starting to look like a cat. No, it is. You can see my eyeballs. Oh, oh they're so big. Anime cat. You can also needle felt things that aren't just sheep wool. You can do. Well, I've heard of people doing cat hair and dog hair, but it's like they they do it for like mementos when their pet passes. Um, you could also technically do it with human hair, um, just like the Victorians did. It was a thing they often did as a mourning thing too. Um, they would take it out of hairbrushes, not just <laughs> stealing the hair off the person. And I know that they say alpaca is too soft, like you'll just be poking at it forever and it won't tangle too well. That's why the, the rougher roving is better for this. I think llama's better because alpaca is a lot softer than llama. I've, I also kind of looked into angora rabbit and that's a little too soft and it, it has shorter fibers so it, it's harder to tangle together. Um, and the reason why I was looking into that was like, uh, it's also harder to make yarn out of Angora rabbit fur because of that same reason yep. that it has to be blended with things a lot of the time. But I would assume camel hair would also work because they make camel hair yarn. Um, not that anyone around here would have a camel. Um, Maybe I actually bought some camel yarn at the natural fiber shop in Grand Rapids. Don't know. <laughs> Just want the yarn. <laughs> Okay, so I think I'm at the point that I want to do the nose. So I'm going to take some more pink. You've got a couple options of pink for yours. And this is going to be a really small thing. I'm not going to like poke it before putting it on here. I'm just going to stick it right on. And just kind of start shaping it so that it works. And cats kind of have that like mushroom shaped nose. I'm going to push some of it up to get that mushroom shape. And then a little bit for that downward part that goes towards their mouth. 
I also included some red in the kits if you wanted to do like a tongue or something like that. You could do a mouth that's completely open. You could also do the full mouth there with the pink. But you can add whatever details you want to yours. Um, another thing that is often done for other kind of things. So say you want to put like a patch on the chest of the white and you want it to kind of look like fur sticking out like kind of like a beard almost. You can just, wow that's still too much, you can just stick it on there and leave the other end wispy. So you can just work the top portion in like this. And then I'm going to pull a little more off me working that top portion in and leave the bottom wispy like how a lot of cats have that little patch on their chest. You can also trim it with scissors if it's just too long. Or if you really want to, you can just felt it all in to make that kind of like bib look that some cats have. So you can add whatever details you want. And actually the laying of different colors on top of it is called skinning. So it's like just adding a layer of skin to your project. And just like with the eyes, you can shape it by pushing outward with the horizontal stabs. Or you can push it back in if you decide you don't like that. Clean up your edges. You can also pick up any of those stragglers and kind of push them in to make a cleaner line between the two colors. So a couple more details you might want to add. You can add a tail. You can also add definition of feet. You could do little paws. Um, or you can just leave it one simple shape. I might add some tail here. And to do a tail, I'm just going to take some of the extra black I have, twist it so I don't have to felt as much of it, and then dab it into shape. And I'm going to add a little bit of white to the end of the tail. going about that it might be an easier easier way of doing it actually doing a little bit of white and then adding the black around that because the black was showing through it
Oh, did you make yours a skunk? No, it's, I mean, I have a little scarf. Oh, a right scarf. On. Oh, yeah, you could add cute little details like scarves. You could have it holding a heart. You could have it um, make a fall leaf to go next to it. And then I would just attach the tail like I've attached everything else. There's our video again. So this is my cat. Next month, we're working on fabric pumpkins. We'll be sewing yo-yos and putting them together to make the pumpkin. Uh, that is going to be November 9th at the same time, 5 o'clock. If anyone is interested in this, you can contact me, see Boli at Defiance library.org and the bolle is spelled b-o-l-l-e-y i'll type it in the chat uh, and then after that we've got a crochet christmas lights program for december for our make-alongs you can also use the makerspace like i was saying we'll work something out you can do a virtual uh, use of the makerspace i can set up the hover cam that i'm using here today to show you the silhouette in progress or even the 3d printer you probably won't want to watch the 3d printer the entire time because it can take a really long time if it's a even a small object actually <laughs> it takes a while but we can work out design stuff that way too through video chat So how much would, like, let's say I wanted to do this at my home, like, how much would How much does like it usually cost? cost? Um, so the kits I've seen for sale, I've seen from $35 to $15. But if you go and, like, buy the stuff yourself, like, not in a kit, it's much cheaper. You can get about 50 of these needles for what I paid twelve dollars I think for 60 actually and then it's five dollars an ounce but an ounce is a little bit more than this ball because it's light it's not super heavy and yeah you can find deals too sometimes with that kind of stuff um, probably the more expensive items for safety eyes, but I just wanted to get some of those so we can use them with our crochet projects also. And actually the foam can cost a lot if you get the really nice foam. This one's just kind of like shipping foam. You can use a pillow, you can use other stuff, but you're definitely going to get some fibers stuck in it. So don't use a pillow that you like and want to continue using because it's going to get all felty up. So, yeah. yeah. And I actually have at home, what I use for my padding is it came out of my uncle's insulin shipment, the inside that plastic stuff that keeps it cold. Like it's just foam, like upholstery foam, but it was just gonna get thrown away anyhow. So. I cut open the plastic and took out the foam part. Oh, yeah, that would probably work. I just put into the chat my email or my uh, extension here at the library with the library's phone number if you want to register for any of the classes or if you want to use the Makerspace, set up any appointments for anything.